So what we've been doing so far by looking at this handout is we're setting up a basic template file. Um, what we've done by editing the config file is setting basic parameters of our project. Maybe the next project that we want, we also want it to stay portal, portal orientation. The next version of a project that we do, we want it to have our developer's name and such. But obviously, these things that we wrote here don't apply to every single app. This background color might not be the right background color everywhere. Um, but what we've got, I'm going to close my config file. I'm done with it for the moment. Close that config XML file. And if you go to your flash drive where you've got your apps, right? we've got this template file. This template is what we've been working with right now. Now, in theory, all that I would need to do is if I, if I copy that folder, you don't have to do this, but if we copy that folder, that's a brand new app because the folder is self-contained. So, see here, I'm, I'm copying it. I have a brand new app, in theory. And if I name that something else like, you know, my app, it's a new app. The catch, though, is both of those folders are using the same data in the config file. Template here in the config XML file says it's a certain app, and my app over here says it's the exact same app. Well, later when we actually do this, we'll see that we actually then have to go back to the config XML file and edit the specific details of that new app. So we'll do this later, but notice that's a, that's a new app. It's in a new folder. It's, it's a new app. But what we would also need to do is go in here and change the specific uh, features of that new version of the app. And simply doing that will give us a new app. This is what makes it unique. This is why there can be more than one calculator app in the App Store, more than one um, weather app in the App Store, all with the exact same name. Well, the difference is that one is com.weatherchannel.myapp, and one is com.yahoo.weather. There are different IDs here that identify them internally as different apps. Yes, apps is the parent folder that I'm going to save all my apps at. Right. And so what, what do you think we added to it on the I did on template copy, okay. and then I did paste. So the copy is a brand new app with a brand new ID. It's a brand new app. So we won't have to do anything like that just yet. We still have this template file, but that, that can be our route for future apps. I have a brand new handout for you in the network folder. So if you go over to the network folder, you will see no, handout number five, which is Taco Workflow 2. So go back to the network folder, open our class folder, and copy handout five. Get a copy of Taco Platform, Taco Workflow number two, handout number five. Open that up. I'm going to introduce these two concepts right now. We won't have very much use for them right now, but we're going to have a lot of use for them a little bit later. The first section is our monitor, our Android monitor. We'll see that one. That will allow us to see what our device is doing, to see console log output. Now this will also work with a virtual device, so if you haven't been able to get a real device working and you're working with a virtual device, we will still be able to use this monitor. 
We'll see how to do that in a moment. Secondly, we can use the monitor to create screenshots of whatever is on our screen. It doesn't have to be our app, anything on our device. The purpose of that, when we do it eventually, that we need is, well, we're going to publish an app eventually, and we need to upload screenshots of what our app looks like so that people can decide to download it or not. So we'll be able to capture screenshots, and there's a way to do a keyboard combination on your device. But then you have to get it off of your device. Here will allow us right on our computer to take a snapshot of what's on the screen. Both of these come using the, the Android monitor. So to use that, we're going to open on the C drive in the program files x86 folder, in the Android folder, in the Android SDK tools folder, we have an app there. So open a new computer window, open the local disk C, open the program files x86 folder, open the Android folder, the Android SDK Windows folder, and then the Tools folder. There's a bunch of tools here, but the one we care about at the moment is the one called monitor.bat. Double-click monitor.bat. You may get a brief pop-up for a moment, and then it, you should wait a little bit more. You might get a pop-up that says, thanks for using the SDK. Sometimes what I notice is it looks like nothing is happening because that screen popped under another screen. So if you're waiting and nothing is happening at all, move your screens out of the way, you probably will get this, thanks for using Android. It should be there. It doesn't appear on your status bar down here. There should be something that pops up. What this is saying is, okay, you're using the Android SDK, would you like Google to collect statistics about your uses and such? It doesn't matter if you do or don't, but I'm going to say no because I think it takes up some resources. So I'll say no, don't send stats. Proceed. Keep waiting a bit more, and then eventually you'll get the Android device monitor, and it will show up on your taskbar down there. This screen is... Um, got a lot of stuff going on here, but according to my handout, what we care about is on the left side you'll see a tab named Devices, and at the bottom one named LogCat. On the left side, I see Devices, and I see that my Motorola device is plugged in. At the moment, it's running the original Hello Taco app, and it's running my template app. At the bottom, I see a screen, especially if I've got a real device, I see a screen that's constantly giving me feedback. Because even though I'm not even touching this, it's doing things behind the scenes. It's checking the battery level, it's checking the Wi-Fi strength, it's doing a lot of things, it's connecting to the NSA. I mean, it's just giving, you know, information and such. And so that is sort of like the console log that we can do over on Google Chrome, but it's just giving us lots of information. We can filter the information that it's giving us to focus on, give me the, give me the, the output that my app is sending out only. I don't want to see all this stuff about my antenna level and all of that. So my handout says, um, so either emulate a project or run a project. On the emulator, it should still show it to you there. On the Devices tab, you'll see your device and you'll see your apps. Your app is referenced by its ID. On the bottom, you have the log cat, log catalog. Um, there are no filters at the moment. We're going to create a new filter, so click the plus sign. We can call this filter anything we want. We'll just call it template. That's the name of my app, template. It can be anything you want. What are we specifically filtering? We want to filter by the app name. And that app name is your package ID. In my case, com.jones.template. Yours is probably not called Jones. Type what you need to type. 
whatever yours is called there. If you click OK, and now your filters here, your output here, that is, will be filtered to only show what your app is doing. For example, my app, I, it was it was asleep, and then I, I woke it up, and it says, is active. If I go to the home screen, it might give me feedback, and then if I go back and open my app again, it's going to give me that, um, that feedback that my app is doing something. Not very impressive at the moment, but once we start to get complex with JavaScript and all of that, and we want to do console log, remember console.log, something. When we wanted to output some console output, we can see it right here to debug it. We have other things that we can look at here to, to further debug it, like um, memory usage and all of that. And so again, at the moment, we won't have very much use for it just right now. But as we get more complex in our projects, this will be very useful. Your logcat output will, will now only show feedback from your app. We can now use logcat to monitor any JavaScript errors or console.log output. When we're ready to publish, publish our app to these stores, we will need a variety of assets. Screenshot, screenshots are used to show previews of the app before download. So we can do that within here, our monitor, our Android device monitor. Do you see at the top, under devices, you have a bunch of icons, and one of them is a little camera, screen capture. Make sure you've clicked on your device, because you can have more than one running. And then click Screen Capture. That's what's on my device right now. It's not live. So if I go back to my home screen, it doesn't refresh until I click Refresh. So this is what's on my home screen on my device right here. So, yes? It's the one right here with the little camera. Screen capture. So this will be more useful a little later, but if you'd like, you can open up some sort of screen on your device, click Save, and this will save it as a ping file, a PNG file of your device with a timestamp and all of that. And so there I have a copy of, a very nice high quality copy of my High quality picture of uh, of my of my app with everything on my device. So um, this is going to be useful for uh, later on when when we're actually making our store listing and we need to display screenshots of, of how our app works. That's what this is saying. Along the strip of icons at the top, click on the camera. That's your screen capture. You'll see that your, your device's screen. It doesn't have to be your running app. It can be anything that's happening on your device. You'll need to click Refresh to show the latest version of whatever's on your screen. So if I open some other app over here, I have to click Refresh to actually see what it's doing. Rotate. It won't actually rotate your phone, it's going to rotate just the screen here. From this Android device monitor, we have a lot of things here. We're basically going to use the features, features of Logcat and the screenshot. But what you can also do if you're already in the device monitor, at the top right corner, 
you have an icon here for the SDK manager and, a, and an icon for the virtual device manager. So instead of going back to those apps elsewhere, they're also in here. So you can open up your AVD manager and you can open up your SDK manager from this screen. Let me, get, let me get a show of hands just to, can, just to check again. After this day that we've spent so far in setting up our apps and so forth, how many of you did manage to get your Cordova app to run on your device? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A little bit less than half. Um, if you didn't get it to run, we'll, we'll do lab time in a moment. And remember, of course, um, we, we're focusing on Android because we have all the requisite tools. But Taco is agnostic to some degree. Uh, as long as we've got the right tools, the right SDKs, the right software and such, we can use Taco to create an iOS project, a Windows project, a Firefox OS project, etc. I'm going to close my device monitor for the moment. And on the second day of class, what I like to do is spend this time to set up our devices because it's, it's not going to help us too much to proceed if we don't have something to work with, either real or virtual device. So for the second day of class, I'm going to end the lecture a little bit early. At this point, we'll have some lab time the rest of the day. But general questions of anything we've do been doing so far today? Yes. If you leave your app on our desktop, it's going to go away. As soon as you turn off your computer, it'll delete. So you, you should find a way to take it with you. Now, this project that we're working with together now, if you don't save it now, that's okay. I'm about to save a copy of my template file into the network folder if people want that. And at the end of every day, I'm going to leave a copy of my code in the network folder also if people want it. Any other general questions? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the network folder right now and put a copy of my template in there. In case you want how mine ended up, yours is probably the same. We By now, we didn't do a whole lot Com complexly, a lot of complexity. But in the network folder, I'm about to put it in here. Just wait a moment because now it does take a moment to copy, about 60 seconds. So our project now that we've started to add actual content to it, like the Android code, now it's about 24 megabytes. And then when we start to add our own pictures and, and other features, splash icons and such, it'll get a little larger. It's going to copy over in just a moment. If you are new today, make sure you make sure you've got the ad code. If today's your first day, make sure you've got the ad code and used the ad code on the website to add yourself to the class. Don't just take the sticker. Go to the website and add yourself to the class if you are new today. Make sure also that everyone signed in, printed their name legibly. You can sign out if you want, or I'll sign you out. Don't forget to take your beverages and such here. My copy of my work is in the folder now, so if you'd like template Victor 2016-0707, there's my file. You can take it, and every time we end the day, I'll put a copy with today's date in that folder. If you'd like to practice any of the things we did today, I would suggest it because it's going to be a weekend and I'm not going to be there to rescue you. So give it a try and see if you can try any of these things on your own because, yes, I make it look so easy out here. I've done it for a few years now. And sometimes things happen that don't quite work and we have to figure it out. But again, it's been so many times that something doesn't work and I simply unplug it, 
plug it back in, and then it works. It wakes it up. Some minor thing, maybe it's minor mistyping or something. So I'm going to end the main lecture at this point. We'll have lab time until about 8.30. If you need any help, call me over. Thank you for coming, and we'll do it again on Tuesday.